Okay. Let's have a class. And uh, the system is, is frozen. And I have only 10 minutes, so I'm not going to call the person coming. So anyway, I'm going to just use chalkboard talk today. And uh, this is going to be important for the exam, to be honest. So I hope you take a note and you're going to be listening. And a uh, little bit of difference between, although we are talking about biochemistry, but they're going to be a little bit different from what you learned. So we're going to talk, OK? Um, first couple of slides, we'll go over next Tuesday. First couple of slides, you can skip. We'll go over it when we go back to the system. We will talk about the bacteria so far. You talk about E. coli, Salmonella, Listeria, and Proteus Gargalia, Pseudomonas. Those bacteria, based on the energy, light, and the carbon resource, they belong into chemo-heterooxytrophs. So that is the bottom line of the slide. So we'll go over it, OK? This is just a based on energy, carbon resource, and the light resource we could see uh, where the bacteria is belonging. Okay, so that's very simple. We gotta pay much attention here. He's talking about the fermentation, glycolysis, and the citric acid cycle. Okay, now following the slides, about like slides four and the three and the four, we are talking about is energy. And the energy acquired by microorganisms. Then we are talk about action is electron transfer. And we know it's had a donor and uh, acceptor. Now what is the whole slides talk about? They have two slides described that we can talk very simple using two sentences to conclude it. Which means if electron donor is organic chemical and electron acceptor is also organic chemical. This is the one we call fermentation. So this is the first conclusion. Number two, if electron donor is organic and electron acceptor is inorganic chemical. And this is called respiration. Now, based on the inorganic chemical, we call the differentiated respiration become aerobic respiration and anaerobic. So what this means? What is aerobic respiration? If the final electron acceptor is inorganic chemical, this inorganic chemical is oxygen. This is called aerobic respiration. If the final electron acceptor, the inorganic chemical, is not oxygen. It's like sulfide, like ferric, or others. This is called anaerobic respiration. And we know aerobic respiration created much more energy, much more ATP, compared to the anaerobic. The reason is the distance of voltage value between donor and acceptor is larger here compared to here. Okay, 
So this is the first conclusion, what we talk about. And then we got to mention detail about what is fermentation. Okay, so I'm going to uh, remove the here. Then we're going to talk about fermentation. Then we move on to respiration. So what is fermentation? I'll give you two formula we talk about. Number one, fermentation could happen is pyruvate. Then become lactic gases. Of course, it's accompanied with NADH oxidized to become NAD plus. Okay, if this thing happens, this is called hormone fermentation. So what is pyruvate then? This is pyruvate. Okay, what is the lactic acid? We'll talk about, talk about structure. It's so easy. I say that NADH reduced oxidase to NAD plus. Okay, so where is oxygen gone? Where is protons gone? Of course, we'll add it there. So what is that to get to? Here are the things we added. So you can go there. So easy. You don't have to remember. If you know the story behind it, it's so easy. Okay? Now, this is important. With this formula, you need to know which one is oxidized products. Which one is reduced products. And which one is oxidizing reagent and which one is reducing reagent and I already said oxidized products is what? NAD plus what is reduced product? lactic acid And this is also what we call pyruvate derivatives. Then what, what is oxidizing reagent? What is reducing reagent? You tell me? What is reducing reagent? Is that pyruvate? What is oxidizing reagent? Of course, that is. Okay, so this is you should know. Now, we don't mention this part too often. In the microbiology area, this is only we talk about chemistry. But these two, you should be very clear what it talks about. Okay, this is called a hormone fermentation. Now, here, you must be know, there is important with this stuff. This is an electron carrier. And you need to know, electron carrier, for bacteria during fermentation, they must be recycled. And I will tell you later on, okay? Now you're going to have a question. Why do you suddenly jump to pyruvate? Then you should know where the pyruvate comes from. What is this? Glycolysis. We'll talk real quick. Okay? This is comes from here. So you need to know, if it's hormone fermentation, these two are coupled. No, we will mention. Okay, this is 
homo fermentation. Okay, they are the second thing could happen. I was on top. Okay, we have pyrolate. We're gonna at the end of the day become what? Alcohol. So which means during the fermentation process we have created the products is not a lack of gas, is some other chemicals. This is what we call it petrol fermentation. That's a very simple definition is fermented products generate other things other than lactic acid. For example, alcohol. Okay. During here, you have a intermediate product called acetaldehyde. And then go to alcohol. Okay. Now what happened? This is the same thing. This is MAD H2 reduced to MAD plus. You have this recycled electron carrier there. Here is MAD plus. When you see MAD plus, there is a well. You could add there that proton. Okay, which means you potentially can carry enemy. Okay, same thing. If we want to write a structure, not difficult at all. Okay, what is our acetyl aldehyde? This, you're going to release carbon dioxide. Okay, so go here. Okay, when you go here, alcohol, what is alcohol? You gotta put these things back. So what it looks like. That is alcohol. Okay, so easy. CH3, CH. O C H two. Okay, that's called heterofermentation. fermentation. Now, this is a very simple one. In the real life, it is much more complicated. If we talk about food chemistry, okay. Oh no, this is the one you really like in your lifetime. This is where wine comes from. Where the beer comes. From. And you know the bear, there's two types, which is owl and the large lager. Owl is a little bit light, lager is a little bit dark. So top fermentation, bottom fermentation. And we can go on and on. And you also know alcohol, when they go deep fermentation, go second fermentation, what are they gonna become? Acidic acids, what is that? Vinegar, yes. 5% acidic acid is a major ingredient for vinegar. These we can talk on and on, on and on, okay? So this is we're not gonna talk here. So we briefly talk to you about fermentation. Now what are the fermentation products? If you look at your slides, you can see it. Swiss cheese, probiotic acid, you see these corners? That's carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is gonna come, come out sometimes. And you see acidic acids, which is coming from E. coli. And you see the acetone which is a nail remover, and you can buy a small bottle from Sephora or Alda in some of the store, which is in the modern town, uh, more center, you can buy it. Where it comes from? It comes from cross union fermentation. And of course, you have a lactic acid that comes out from cheese, yogurts, because the lactobacillus is going through the fermentation. Okay, so those are the easiest you already know, talk about. So that's application of the fermentation. Now, if we want to do a conclusion of the fermentation, we want to mention something right here. So, I'm going to drop. Uh, I'm going to drop this one. Uh, I'm going to move the camera a little bit here so we can talk about the conclusion. If we want to talk about the conclusion of fermentation, we want to 
convention number one. This is happens in the absence of oxygen. This is, you know, no oxygen. Second, how many ATP generate? Only two ATPs generate. Now, how the ATP generates? This ATP is coming through the glycolysis. That's why I said it is coupled. Okay? And they are going through substrate level phosphorylation. And this is coupled with glycolysis. Okay, so if you want to say the conclusion, these are the things we talk about are the conclusions for the fermentation related to the energy. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna move on to here. Then we're gonna spend time to talk about glycolysis and the others. So fermentation we finished. So if you want to draw over a picture, we could draw uh, let's just remove this. And I'll talk about aerobic respiration. Okay. So we know this is glucose. Glucose goes here. During the branch reaction, okay, we'll generate a pyrobin. If the pyruvate go this way, that means in the absence of, of oxygen, so no oxygen, then the bacteria are gonna go this way, going through fermentation. Okay, that's what we draw already. How about in the presence of oxygen? Then this guy goes here, we'll go a second. This is citric, gasic, so we're going to talk about this. Now in this class, we're going to go over all the chemicals and the, all the uh, structures, but that is for extra points. For most of you, you need to know the key is how many ATPs generated during uh, aerobic respiration. This is a key question. We will be talking about the calibration, how to do it. Okay? So we're going to do these one by one. Number one, glycolysis. Okay. What is glycolysis? The first thing you need to know, this is a branch reaction. This area is six carbon, this area is three carbon, and three carbon. Okay, so we're gonna talk about those. The way how you learn it, first of all, you learn the name. Okay, so what's the procedure? Glucose become Glucose 6-phosphates then become fructose 6-phosphates then become fructose 1-6-5-phosphates. This is a 6-carbon phase. Okay, this is the first thing. Okay, now you want to draw the structure. The first thing you need to know, what is glucose? This is glucose. Glucose, by the way, there is a three different level, three different formation, ring, chair, and the over ring. So what we here we draw is a ring. 
Okay, you need to know this is a glucose. If you don't know about this is a glucose, then please go back and retake your organic chemistry 101. Okay, this is the first thing you need to know. Then we talk about all these things, okay. Second, glucose becomes glucose 6-phosphate. Okay, what does the 6-phosphate mean? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So they are attacking that hydroxy base right on the top. So what it looks like? It's very simple. Okay, we go here. These are all the same. CH2. Oh, that is a P. It's right here. That's glucose 6-phosphate. Okay? So I'll just make sure this goes through. Okay, now the question. Glucose become glucose 6-phosphates. Where that comes? You learned in your chemistry, biochemistry class. They talk about the enzyme. Hexokinase. Is this happening in bacteria? Yes. Fungi modes. Some of the bacteria. But for most of the bacteria, you need to know. Glucose become glucose 6-phosphates. Where they come from? They come from, if you remember, group <coughs> transport system. Is that right? Okay. Now you go here. Glucose 6-phosphate become fructose 6-phosphate. What is fructose 6 phosphate? Let's just go here. Okay. CH2O PH HOH OH H CH2OH and OH. This guy and this guy are exactly the same chemical ingredients. The only difference is the structure is different. So, what's going to happen? Isomerase. And the isomerization. Okay? That happens here. You can easily understand that the structure changed. This is easily to break it down. You have a feeling, look at this. This is not really Asymmetric, is that right? This is, makes it very easy to cut it up. You know, you know what, I, what I'm saying? This is easy to cut it up. This is not that easy from the structure standpoint. Okay, then they become glucose 6-phosphates. What is that? That is so easy, put it right here. So, is that easy you write a stru structure? You, you just know the story. It's, you know glucose, you should know all that. Then that is fructose over 6 by phosphorus. Okay? So, <coughs> for this. Okay, now. Now, what is that enzyme? That is called a phosphate fructose kinase. Okay, whatever they call it is kinase. So, it's easy. We don't uh, want to write enzyme because it's not biochemistry class. I'll just tell you. It's so easy, just as kinase. Now, we're going to talk about is how many ATP going to be in So, we're going to. Talk a little bit about here. When you see glucose become glucose 6 phosphates, where did that ATP go? Where is that phosphate come from? Of course it comes from an ATP hydrolyzed, become an ADP, and the donated one phosphate. This is isomerization. I said I just changed. How come fructose 6-phosphate become fructose 1,6,5-phosphate? Of course it happened again, which is a ATP becomes ADP and a phosphate. So here you can see, you add up them together. This is negative 2 ATPs has been used. Is that right? 
So we call this is an investment. Okay, so here is something I want to also mention. We talk about right now is right here. Okay, we call it the investment stage. And when we talk about the glycolysis or urine you biochemistry class, this is called abdomen Mayerhoff pathway, which is universal for most of the general bacteria. But how about the bacteria in the soil? The bacteria in the soil is different, which is called antenna Dollarhoff pathway. What is the difference? Is this six carbon stage is different, which means this investment stage is different. So you can understand this general bacteria using abdomen Mayerhoff pathway. This is like you buy a stock to do the investment. But the other bacteria, let's say the bacteria in the soil, they maybe buy hops, maybe buy gas, maybe buy oil. They have a different investment way. That's why the six carbon looks like different. However, the three carbon area is also always you're gonna get the money. You gotta get the energy. They all look very similar or exactly the same. Because at the end of the day, no matter how you investment, you want to get the money. Is that right? So that's the same thing for the bacteria. Okay? So this is something we want to mention. So this is six carbon stage. We already talked. So we're going to move on to three carbon stage. Three carbon stage is a little bit complicated, so we're going to talk these one by one. Okay. Here, fructose 164 biphosphate is right here. Okay. So we just write on the top. Fructose uh, group one six five phosphate. Okay. Then they're gonna go to a branch. Okay, I wrote name here, structure right there. What are they gonna happen? Dry zero dehyde three phosphates. Go through here. One, three, five, phosphor, collide, separate. Okay, goes here. Three, phosphor, collide, separate. Go here. Two, phosphor, collide, separate. Then go here. Phos for phenol pyruvate. And the last one. 